Have you ever wondered how organizations that are spread out across the United States, how their leaders actually manage their employees day to day? How do they keep them focused on the mission without being in front of them? Well, we're going to talk about that today with my guest, Tim Cox, head of Car Now. Hi, welcome back to another episode of You're in Charge, Now What? I'm your host, Glenn Pash, and the goal of this channel is to help those of you that find yourself in charge of a business, a division, a team, or even a project build the skills necessary to lead high-performing teams. Each week, I'm going to focus on one topic. I'm going to bring in some friends like Tim here to talk about it as well to help give you strategies that have helped us build our businesses so that you can generate consistent Results. So without further ado, let's dive in. I want to introduce my guest, Tim Cox, and I will let him tell you a little bit about himself. But I do want to just say, Tim, I'm excited to talk to you. As we were just saying in the prep, I don't think a lot of people talk to you about how you run your business or build your business or how you develop your leaders in your team. But that's something we want to focus on because you have a huge footprint. I've known you now for multiple years and just seen your business grow without ever losing focus on the 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 product quality like I've never heard anyone say oh well Tim lost his focus and so I want to really focus on that versus you know the nuts of we've talked marketing till we're blue in the face so give the uh, audience here a little 30 second who you are and we'll go from there uh, thank you Glenn uh, my name is Tim Cox I have been in this beautiful thing we call the car business since the year of our Lord 1989. Uh, where I started my first car that I ever sold was a beautiful, beautiful Robin's Egg Blue Hyundai Excel three-door, (laughs) three-door GS hatchback as I got my tie cut at Jake Sweeney Hyundai. And um, I've loved the car business. I love the space as it continues to evolve. Uh, Back in 2013, Um, we had a serial entrepreneur who's now one of my best friends, if not my best friend, Andy Park, um, Mm -hmm. who had had another software company that was acquired in 2008, walked into my dealership, uh, which was Hennessy Lexus, which I I was there 10 years, four months. And he basically said, if you had a, a magic wand and you know, what does the car business need? And we started collaborating and it was the, what we were talking about before, how we communicate with consumers and setting the tone to differentiate your dealership. And the rest is history. Uh, We've been very fortunate. And um, you started by saying, I I think the first thing in all of this is you said, I, I think the first thing to any successful anything is taking the word I out of everything. Right. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, uh, We we hire people, we always say we, you know, um, and, and, you know, our partners, my partners uh, uh, have done this collectively and have the same mindset. And, uh, and, and we've, we've been very fortunate and we continue, you know, you wake up every day, like it's all going to blow up and you work harder today than you did yesterday. I mean, seriously, right. no, I, listen, got, I agree. Got competition, so you better outperform, you better out love, you better outserve serve, uh, everybody else around you. You need to be aware of what's going on, but you need to be laser focused on your dealers. So, um, that's where we are. So great. Well, that, that's awesome. I can't wait to talk to you about like unpack a lot of that because, you know, as I said to you uh, before we started, you know, I started this channel and this little journey I'm going on because we see a lot of people in a variety of businesses, just pick any business. And because you're skilled at something, somehow you end up in charge of something. Yeah. And I do think that's where the title came from. There's a lot of people who say, well, now I'm in charge of this. What do I do? I don't know where to look. I don't know where to get the information. No one's here to help me and I'll figure it out. And I think there is a lot of waste wasted effort, wasted results, because a lot of times people are practicing on their customers. So what I wanted to just, you know, kick the ball off a little bit is sort of go where you are now and then go a little bit backwards. But you were, we joked, you were remote before remote was cool, so to speak. Everybody's now remote teams. But what I always marveled, because I struggled with it, was how do you, one, create a remote 
team, be it remote sales force by, you know, a structure or people selling your product or, or, or handling the results of your product. Talk to me about how your structure is now and how you came to that. And then also, how does it work in the day-to-day and managing all of that? I think that'll be very helpful to the audience. Well, it's about touch points. I mean, everybody, you know, commercial real estate right now, there's there's I, Twitter. I saw a, a post, Twitter is now decided to go absolutely 100% remote. Yep. No yep. more real estate. So understand it's it's all, you still have to stay in front of your customer, whether that's a dealership or whatever you're selling constantly. Right. There are several companies that did a great job of that when I was behind the desk and we tried to mirror that. Um, whether that's an email that a, a dealer or whoever doesn't even open up, but they're constantly seeing your face there. But right. you know, that's key. Uh, in fact, there was a particular vendor uh, that has done very, very well, and they did a great job, and they probably got 80% of the, the dealer base, and there was mandatory training that you had to do on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. So we have, um, uh, you know, three times as many people in support. We have what's called client success teams. So there's different right. layers, okay? So there's a client success team, and then we have performance managers, performance directors. And then our VP of performance, which is Jeff Brooks, it, he oversees all of that. And quite frankly, it starts, you say, how do you do that? It starts with hiring the right people. Hiring the right people that, 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 that will uh, have that same attitude uh, that understand that significance. If you try to pour into somebody, love on that person, encourage that, some, that, that person, that being significant in their life, equal success for everybody else. Meaning- so when you, let me just stop, pause you there. So when you're, I had this conversation with uh, Corey Mosley the other day, we were talking about, you know, when someone goes in from a consultative standpoint to help a team get better and you look at, you know, do you have everything documented like processes and structure and training and all so that you can hire the right people. So do you believe that it's, if I, I I have a structure and saying these are the qualities I look for, these are the skills I look for, or do you look at it a different way and say, I can teach you skills, but I, I need this type of personality to be able to, you know, match either I'd my rather have a personality, you know, we, we've passed on some people that were the number one salespeople in the country in further for their particular product, just because it was not a right fit. You know, you have to, uh, we, you know, I, I looked at several companies, QT, for example, and I talked to their administration on their C-level executive team, you know, QT's down here in Atlanta and across the Southeast. Wawa is another gas station up there, but I've never had a bad experience at these places. So I asked them, how do you hire your people? And you can teach your software is not rocket science, but these people, um, I, I think the most important thing, and look, there, there, there's a combination of two that I'd love to see. For starters, don't get, there's a fine line between conceit and confidence. Right, and absolutely. Confidence. Yep. I can be confident, but I'm not going to be conceited. But I think the, 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 the undertone is having the, enough humility and security within yourself. I think that has been as far, and look, we've missed. We've missed on hiring. We've hired a lot of people. Sure. And sometimes we miss. We're not perfect. Uh, but the court, the, you know, for example, the last several months uh, that this has been going on, the most amazing thing that I have been proud of is our team. We didn't have to tell them to do it. They all, because of the type of people that they are, right. they were like, this is exactly what we have to do. You gave, and I've, I've talked about the conversation that you and I had at AAAS. Um, that was more encouragement that you told me. And I told my team in our annual meeting when you said, Tim, how in the world, and this is, and by the way, for everyone that thinks I made that story up, Glenn's right here and he can confirm that. <laughs> so, so it was after the conference or during, one of the nights during the conference, we were all sitting down together in a, in a, in a love seat, uh, you know, chairs everywhere. And there's a bunch of us. And you looked at me and said, Tim, how in the world do you hire your people? Every time I talk to someone from your, they're happy, they're energetic. Uh, when I talk to a dealership and no, yes, we've dropped the ball. But sure. that is the most important thing, creating that. Everybody talks about culture. It's great to talk about it in the honest, but what happens inside an organization? Is that the real culture? Do you give people uh, enough room? We want to hire people 
that um, that obviously are so, you know, that that are self motivated, and you have to be if you're working from home, right? Right. You can't work, everybody's working from home now. You know, your fear is that they're going to have their pajamas on till one o'clock eating Fruit Loops, right? So, so you need to make make sure that you know you you really take time. If you take time, it's just like in the car business. You know, you don't when you buy a used car, you don't make your money when you sell it. You make it when you buy it. And when you're putting teams together, character to us, you know, how did other talking to other companies they work? How are they not at their job necessarily, but what were they to work around? Were they right. team, did they lift people up? That type of thing is what we really focus on. That's why you have to have, you know, eight or nine people joke all the time, eight, nine, 10 different phone conversations and several in-person conversations, um, not since COVID, obviously, to, to come on the Carnell team. Because we want to make sure if anybody, anybody at all has any reservations, well, I noticed this, or well, I noticed this, then it's probably not going to work out. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, we've done a very good job of uh, evolving our interview process as well, you know, because we made mistakes, you know, believe the hype, everybody's on their best behavior. But I think that's really key. And this is something, again, as we talk through these episodes, we always talk about dropping tools in, you know, your toolbox, you know, for the viewers to build up those tools that you need. And this is one that I think you really want to make sure that you focus on is the fact that everybody's on their best behavior in interviews. Everybody's yep. selling. It's a sales game. What you're looking for is what happens after the fact. You know, we've had people spend a couple hours at, with the team just watching what they're doing and we listen. I said, "What? Well, listen to what they say because if somebody starts talking negatively about their previous company or blaming other people, uh, oh, it wasn't my fault, it was their fault, that may not be the right person. And I always have said, my gauge was I'd rather take somebody with 75% skill and 100% heart mm. and 100% skill with 75% heart because work ethic I can't teach. I can't teach it. And, and you're, you're, so, so when you're looking for those people, it's not easy. But I think what, so, so what I want people to take away is what Tim said was multiple interviews with multiple people in person, on phones, different perspective, different questions, take time. As they say, be slow to hire, quick to fire, right? So I love that. I love that. So then when you're thinking about that, as you said, you've layered all of this in most companies when they grow. So let's say you had your performance managers or whatever your bottom level people are interacting. When you get to a certain point where you go, okay, we're growing now. So we, we're going to need more of those people, but then I, now I need to promote somebody to be in charge of this. What are the key talents that you look for? If you say, let's say you had 10 people on that team and you're going, okay, we're, we got to put somebody else on top of this team. Out of that group, what are the things that you're looking for or that stand out to you that would say, that's the good trait of somebody in, that I would put in charge to be a leader of this team? What, what, what do you look for? It, it, for, for? For me, it's, it's a servant's heart. It is, you know, in our business, we, we have official days off and yeah, we're Monday through Friday, but that, you know, when we, and we promote it. Uh, because of that, when we call, look, dealers, things happen. There are a lot of dealers open seven days a week. So when things happen and we get on the phone and we call that particular person and they immediately answer, hey, not a problem, I have it, blah, 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 and they handle it immediately, um, those type of people. When, 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 when even their peers that have the same title as they do, right. when they're struggling, when they come alongside them and help them, uh, we've got many. Uh, I, I hate, I'm not going to mention names because I don't want people to get mad at me, but we've had three instances uh, in the past uh, just three or four months since our current climate. I, I'm not right. even going to say the, the C word anymore the, that, lit, that ends in bid. I'm sick of talking about it. But obviously we had to make some changes. But, you know, those type of people are the people that we are going to, you know, that are going to continue to promote and continue to uh, encourage. You know, a general manager, if I'll give a shout out to, uh, there's several people that made major impacts on my on my car life and my managerial life. One of those is Ed Fetterman, and Ed Fetterman is one of the best car guys I've ever met. Right. Uh, now in St. Louis, uh, he was my, my general manager, and, and I've told almost every person that we've hired at Car Now, at least the ones that have come through Atlanta, or that I've met this, this same thing. And he said it jokingly, but it's so true. He said, he told me 25 years ago, he said, Timmy, he said, if you do a good job, Timmy, if you do a good job, we will always take care of you. 
If you don't do a good job, we'll take care of you. It's that simple. I, I agree. I, I think that's it's a, that simple. But, hey, but that, you know, Dad, I don't know if you're going to see this. I love your brother. And, uh, you know, that stuck with me uh, for many, many years. You know, there's been, you know, a lot of people come through these doors. And the majority of what we're most proud of is, is you know, a huge majority of them have stayed. But having that mentality, giving them, here, here, here's the tool. Here's your right. deal. The ones that rise are the ones when I get phone calls, hey, I listen, I'm just telling you, you know, maybe I've heard your podcast or I've seen, I just had to reach out because I had, you know, Tim came into my store. He was phenomenal. Right. You know, those type of phone calls you hear. I love those. We get those, you know, when I get those emails or I get those phone calls about our team and we, we celebrate them, um, it, it, it's encouraging. Um, and, and I like what you said because... And I, and I think, again, I like pointing these things out because we get energized and we go and I want the viewers to just listen to what Tim said, that idea that they're helping their teammates, right? So someone asked me one time, what do you look for or who out of the team should I promote, right? A lot of times the default is we've all seen it and a lot of time it fails is the top producer, we're now going to make them the manager, but they don't know how to manage people. They can do what they do, but a lot of times they don't know how they do it, so they can't communicate that. So I used to say, okay, who's the manager currently? Let's say they're away for a week and there's a problem. Somebody has a question. Who on the team do they go to? Yeah. I said that, to your point, it's a servant's right. mentality because education, they're approachable, they're patient, they know how to communicate, and they want to help. They're not competitive in that negative way, like, oh, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Like that to me, and I, and I wanted to unpack that concept of servant for people to actually say, here are some actionable things you can look for. But that was always a very simple thing, because when I pose that question to people, they always go, oh, that's Tim. And I'm, okay, so what are we talking about? Tim at least should be a candidate. Now you still have work to do. So let me ask you about that. As you promote, how do... What type of training is in place to help those people now that have assumed those roles of leadership over a team, right? I always say that once I'm promoted to leadership, now I'm on someone else's team, right? I've moved on to somebody else's team. Talk to me in your company. How do you, how is there ongoing training to help me if I'm now running a team and I've been promoted to a new level? Who's helping me? Get better. Well, you know, a lot of uh, when we're talking about sales, we're talking, it depends on sales and, and performance. You know, our right. performance team is the bigger part of our company uh, because obviously dealers need help. They need to be able yep. to get, get a hold of us. So uh, Jeff Brooks does a fabulous job and it's all about mentorship, right? It's about uh, come alongside me, uh, watch, watch what I do and watch how I handle this situation. But the, at the end of the day, as long as you know how to operate the tool, it's all people skills. Right. The two biggest, and I'm, I'm so, the two biggest, how can I word this? The two words that will kill success in any business, I don't care if you're selling pencils or Ferraris, two words in my opinion, insecurity and pride. Oh, yes, sir. Pride, yes, sir. Listen, I watched, I could not believe, I love, I don't know, this is a commercial for the History Channel, but I love watching, if you haven't seen the series, The Men Who Built America. Oh, yeah, and, I started watching that. Yes, yes. And, and the food that built America. It is amazing to me, billions of dollars later, the decisions that, that, that Mr. Hershey made. You know, uh, um, the Mars Brothers came into Hershey and and said hey you know we want to borrow we need your chocolate for our for our milky way and his head sale his vp of sales came into mr hershey and mr hershey said where are they well they're in milwaukee Psh, we don't have any competition well that ended up being the mars company right. right kellogg and post all these things these decisions were made with pride the first thing listen if you get uh, let me just speak to our autom automotive brothers and sisters for a while. And maybe you just got promoted because you're a great salesperson like you, like, you, uh, like you said. Here's the key to success. I really believe this. Walk into every meeting, every person that you well, – it, it's a bigger picture than this. Walk into every meeting wanting to learn something. Walk to have every conversation that you have with your salesperson – Ask them where they want to be in five years and truly care. 
Talk right. to your receptionist. Ask them because that always changes. And when you love on your people that way, and look, I'm not perfect at this. We're all I'm I'm ADD 900 miles an hour. But when you're when you're listen when you when you're pinpoint laser focused on that. And because most of us, what happens is we've had success, we get promoted, we become the smartest guy or girl in the right, room. Right. And then no matter what meeting or boardroom or whatever we're getting ready to go to, we have already put our decision in our head. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Well, listen, on, on our Tim Talks, and you're going to be joining me on, on, on our podcast here in a few weeks, but we always say, listen, no one is smarter than everyone. So in every meeting, everything that we do, and every person that you talk to, whether they're in your business or out of your business, want to learn to grow yourself, Right. that's how we get significance. That's how we, you know, what do people, if you're a boss, what do people say? I'm preaching now, I'm sorry. But that's okay, what do you go. About you, what do people say about you when, they, when you leave the room? Right. Do they say, oh my gosh, thank God, he or she's gone. Whoo. I mean, or are they fired up? Are they ready to charge hell with a squirt gun, man? I mean, we need to, if we have people and leaders in whatever company loving on their people, not, not insecure and, and playing the political game, but every, you know, every day is different. Take every single opportunity, every single opportunity to be significant in someone's life. I'm just telling you, if that is your daily goal, success just happens. It's a byproduct of it. Right. It just happens. I, I, and, and again, for those listening, I think I, I can't, you know, agree more. I always call it a coach's mentality. You know, coaches look at it and say, I just have a different role now than I did before. But we all have to be successful. We all have to play our part to the best of our ability. Now, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what Tim's saying in terms of loving on people and, you know, pouring into them. That doesn't mean you're easy on them. It doesn't mean no, you no, no. accept, you know, poor performance, but your job is to coach them just like you would your sports coach. There's always a coach or a teacher or someone that had an impact on you because they took time to explain they took time invested in you. They watched you. They gave you feedback. They pushed you. Not always nice about it, meaning, go, hey, Tim, as my kids always say, the worst thing I could say to them is, I'm disappointed. Not mad, disappointed. So the kids always say, oh, you're disappointed, right? But that hurt, that's worse to me. You go scream at me, do whatever. I can mentally block that out. But when somebody who I really care about looks at me and goes, man, I'm disappointed. I expected more. Whoa, that's hard. So I think that's really, uh, again, to unpack a little bit, add some tools here. What Tim's saying is, is that when you're promoted, as I say, you're now on someone else's team. So now you have to learn from those people who are above you. You can't just say, I've made it. Same moment in time, your responsibility now is to mentor this team, coach this team, watch what they're doing. As, as Tim's saying, pour into them. That means every day I'm watching what they're doing. Uh, as Tim said, sit next to me. I'll watch what you're doing. I'll, now you can watch me. We're going to learn together. And then I'm going to get out of your way. And I'm going to let you go. But I'm always going to watch. I'm never going to stop watching. Just think of a sports coach, right? I see the stadium behind you, right? Everybody, where are they during a game? The professional. They're the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. And there's people on the sidelines watching. And as soon as they come off, they're like, come here a minute, try this, do this, do this, do this. So the team wins. You can't just say, ah, they're professionals, I'm going home, right? So I love that concept of that servant leadership. Um, so let's pivot one other way here. So when it all started for you guys, and, and as you started to grow, at, so, so a person who's now leading a team, at what point or how do you make that decision of, either growing your team, like how do you get to a point of saying we need more people or not, or when you actually are getting to the point of saying, I think it'll be better if we broke this team into two teams because then I can train two people, right? Having that vision to say, right. well, this is exactly going to be bigger. And, and that was basically it, very simple. The more rooftops we put on in a right. particular area. So as you see behind me, this is the Brave Stadium. Um, so we are in Atlanta. We also have an office in Boston, but this is our main 
uh, our main office. And by the way, I'm just, just, I am, shell, you know, I am being careful. There's nobody else in this entire office, just so everybody <laughs> knows. That's why I don't have a mask on. Nobody is here, period. Just me. So I'm not infecting anyone. But, um, you know, we looked at, uh, as we grew different markets, we said, you know what, we, now we need, you know, our first big hire was in Tampa. You know, we, we, we had some, some dealers we put in Tampa. I, you know, it started, obviously, it was just me. On the sales team was just me, one person. And, um, you know, we, we, we would go, we, we hired an amazing person in Tampa, and then she grew that market. And then I had to hire, uh, we had to hire, excuse me, uh, you know, a performance manager there. So it strictly was as we add rooftops, as obviously now we're in all 50 states, but depending on, there's some states that don't have a debt, you know, that, that, that touch each other, that may right. be one person. But as those states continue to grow and you start, you know, you have 150 or 200 rooftops in a particular state, um, then obviously that, that needs a team of people there. So it strictly was, it, uh, as I said, and we've made mistakes hiring before, but it strictly was as we grow our footprints, let's look at where we need, you know, obviously I lived on a plane still, well, don't anymore, but. Right. You know, uh, we will. We will. <laughs> yeah, we will get back. And, uh, you know, for the most part, that, that it was that simple, Glenn. And then we went through that process of, of talking to everyone. And back then we were so small that, I mean, we, we had we had five people. So, I mean, you know, we did talk to everybody. And right. uh, um, it, that, that, that's how we did it. And we've taken those same principles now that we're. Um, uh, bigger that right. uh, we, we still do you know people okay. kind of laugh you know hey you're the ninth person I've talked to yeah and you might talk to two or three more right you know? right right <laughs> so that's how we've done it okay um completely different topic now because you talked about it early on and again for leaders of teams or businesses or even just a project you know you're hosting a project and uh, I, I always say getting clarity on the end the, the, you touched a little bit on it, and I, I, you're a very good person when you and I have just sat and chatted about, you have a balance. I, don't, I, I think people see this. I don't know if they, maybe not, because you don't move through the world this way, but you are probably one of the most competitive people I've met, meaning hungry and competitive, but you're gentle on the outside. But I hear it. I see it. You know, I start seeing the blood coming up boiling just about here, but, you know, then we push it down. So with competition, that was an interesting thing that, that again, I want lead, new leaders to be able to do that is keeping your focus, being aware versus so focused on your competition that you lose sight of what's going on. So talk to me about you as a leader, your team as leaders, or and how you talk about that, where it's. You know, you go to a conference and there's everyone else and we could get so infatuated with what everybody else is doing versus what's ours. So talk to me about what competition or competitors do for you, to you, and how do you keep your focus but be aware? I think you, you already said it. I think we have to be laser focused in what we are doing, but you have to be aware of what's going on. You know, we were, this is not obviously a, a sales pitch, but we were the first to do a lot of things. We were the first to do, you know, uh, you know, brochures and videos and everything through, you know, the first. So, so a lot of people obviously uh, uh, followed and, and, and did that too. But I, I think it's, it's very important. Even, you know, somebody comes out, you know, with, with something else, you're aware of what's going on, but it doesn't distract you because at the end of the day, it's about relationships at the end of the day. And look, there's some competitors that I, look, I, I, I hate to mention in names, but, but, uh, uh, I'm not going to mention there's a lot of there's a lot of competitors right. of ours that I have great relationships with. Why not? Right. You know, my one and, and, and I'm not going to get I'm trying not to get emotional. My, the Other than my personal other than my father, uh, there's one man that's been a, a huge influence in my life and he just passed. Uh, Sorry. About wow. That. Anyway, you know, he told me uh, actually going to his funeral Friday. He told me, he said, uh, he said, Tim, he said, when you throw mud at others, not only do your hands get dirty, you lose a lot of ground. And, and that's sunk in. I'm not going to throw mud at anybody. We get mud thrown on us all. It's OK. Right. I'm not going to throw mud at anybody. We need to be aware of what's going on. But based on those relationships, we've got competitors that, that they have amazing relationships with their dealer partners and they're never going to leave them. We, we all have those. 
Right. But we need to focus on, we need to be aware and we need to uh, uh, be, be of what's going on in the space. You can't put your head in the sand, but right. be aware, be innovative. You know, you've got your main thing right now, but you still back in the, back in the lab, you know, we talked about, we've got some great things coming. I mean, we've got some great things that are going to rock everything uh, that, that in the lab we're cooking and when they come out. So laser focused, be aware of what your competition's doing, but then be cooking something in the lab. And that goes true in any business uh, and even, even selling automobiles. Right. Um, you know, being aware of, of, of the, the digital retailing experience or the, the experience that somebody has at another dealership, but be laser focused and try to, instead of outselling everyone, out experience everyone. I totally, totally understand. And, and, and that changes everything. I don't care what you're selling. People right. are people. We're, 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 we're people. It's reciprocal. They wrote it in a book a long time ago. Do unto others as right. you want. And, and, and when you do that, uh, that's why I talk about loving on people all the time. And no, I'm not perfect. Just ask my wife, <laughs> you know, but when you do that on a daily basis, man, great things happen. And that's when significance comes. And that's when you're significant. And that's when that significant turns into success on everything around you. That, that's uh, that. Bravo, bravo. So for, for those of you listening, I think this ties into, you know, this, this whole conversation about remote and leading teams and what qualities you're looking for in competition. It is that sense, and, and, and I think it comes with time, it is that sense of security in yourself or confidence in what you can do versus insecurity, because I think when you're so focused on competition, you're not very clear on what you're doing. You're not clear on what your core is. People used to say that about Brian, my brother, and, and me. You know, why would you have some of these other competitors at your conferences? I'm like, I don't worry about that. There's enough for everybody. You know, yeah. As long as they're not coming, you know, disrespecting us or bad-mouthing us, then we can have that conversation of that's really not necessary. You know, I remember having a conversation with a gentleman, Paul Potratz, who has a marketing agency. Very early on, we went on, we created these small roadshow conferences and he came with us and people said, he's your competitor. And we used to joke at that time, you know, maybe there was 18, 17, 18,000 franchise dealerships, let alone independents. And I said, Paul, if you had a thousand and I had a thousand, we'd be doing cartwheels down the street. We'd be so happy. And there's still 16, 15, 16,000 for everybody else. So why are we even worried about competition? I think it comes from insecurity. And like you were saying, the more you, you have to, as a leader, I don't care if you're leading a project, you have to, you know, you're going to you know, work on a project for somebody. There still is, how does this fit into the bigger picture? So if I'm running a team today, what do I need to accomplish now? I can't worry about, to, you know, the competitors or someone else. But like you said, I also have to think about what's next. How do I get better? What's the next step? How do we make it more efficient? Maybe it's not a new product, but if I could make my team more efficient, we could save money plus generate sales. That's a win-win. So I like that concept that you're talking about is focused in your lane, aware of the traffic next to you. But if you start looking at the driver next to you, you're going to crash. You're always cooking. Somebody's in the kitchen, always cooking. Right, exactly. And, and, and I think that's what served your company well. And just watching you grow. And, 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 and as I said to you, I just admire you as a leader. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk about, you know, we, as we joke, we've talked about marketing until we're blue in the face, but I wanted you to come on to talk to others who are in that position of leading the team, because you're right, the people that you have on your team, we don't always have success, like win-win 100% of the time, but the people that I've interacted with have a passion. They have a belief about the company. They're invested in it. They believe that what they're doing, their product and everything is going to have an impact. They're just not selling for the sake of selling. And that is a reflection of the leader. So it's really important that you as a leader, and I want you to talk about this too, is constantly in my mind is everybody's always watching you, just like kids are always watching you. So how you move through the world, how you react, how you talk. I mean, I used to have to catch myself not frustrated with a client saying, oh, well, the if you say that about your client or get show frustration, that allows your people to. So talk to me just as we're getting down to the end of this. 
it, I always ask this question. I'd like you to, to go on this. If, if, if a new leader sat in front of you, maybe not part of your team because they've already bought into your culture, but you're sitting out at a conference or you met somebody else uh, and, and they're saying, Tim, I just got promoted, right? What is it? And I know you've talked about love on it, but like, what would you tell somebody to do first 30 days? I just took over the team, Tim. How do I love on people? How do I win them? Well, you know, give me a couple of tips, actions that somebody new to you would be able to do. I think most importantly is lead by example. There, there are people that, that I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done or will continue to do and make sure that you right. see me do it. Because it, it goes, I can remember Don Moffat. Don Moffat used to be the, the vice president of Southeast Toyota 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever it was, 20 years ago, probably. Yeah, it was 20 years. And he came in and he ended up purchasing the dealership, uh, Evans Toyota, and that became Toyota South. Don, if you're listening, hello. Uh, but another big influence in my life, when I was on the desk at that Toyota dealership, you know, we used to race to, to, to see who was going to get there first. Right. You know, this is a big executive from SDT. Now he owns his own dealership and he was out on the lot moving cars around. Uh, he was arm some, he was a big, strong guy. So he was arm wrestling, you know, technicians. Maybe I don't encourage that for everybody. Right. Uh, arm wrestling technicians in the back a couple of times, but he was just that guy. But he, he, he gave us enough sprout. He let us do what we did, but he did not, he led by example. You know, most leaders, again, that word ego, Ego is the death of your success. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care what watch you have. What did you do today to pour into somebody else? Because at the end of this life that, that, you know, I'm going to my friend's memorial on Friday. It's going to be pretty powerful. And I will say at the end of his life, he left significance. Because at the end of the day, all that stuff is away. You know, what do your kids say about you? So what I mean by that is, number one, lead by example, especially if you're in the store or whatever it is, be the first one there. Make sure you're the first one there. But when you're there, make sure that you have those little 10, 15 minute times that you pull your people out. Hey, listen, let's have a cup of coffee. What are you, what are you seeing around here? How can I serve you better? How can I, who's your new boss, how can I serve you better? What can I do right. for you today? You know, right. how can I, and, and those word tracks, people believe in, and guess what happens? Let me tell you something. If my boss comes in and loves on me and says, hey, what can I, how can I serve you today? Am I going to be blacked out about coming to work the next day? Or am I going to be ready to run through a wall to sell, to do whatever he asks, especially when he's there for me, that I genuinely know? Because listen to this. This is another statement. People do not care how much you know. Right. They don't. They want to know how much you care. Right. So we can be the smartest guy in the room, but in case, and words are cheap. That's why we try to take, I, 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 I can't stand when it talks about anything, me saying I anything. I have the privilege to talk at DMSC. I, or excuse me, we have the privilege to talk at DMSC. I told my partners that we have the privilege of going, you know, when you have that type of mentality, sure. um, uh, it's, it's beautiful. And, and, and I would give you this, because most people that are either great salespeople and they get promoted, um, uh, another guy spoke in my life, uh, read, what, number one, read, listen. If you're ADD, do audiobooks. John Maxwell is uh, one of the leading, I had the privilege to meet him a couple times, uh, but John Maxwell is one of the leading authorities in leadership across the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, two things that really stood out uh, that he said, uh, and then one changed my life. He said, you know, as I talk to big companies, he says the most successful companies, their leadership, there are several things that, that all their leadership has. They have a mindset that the leader says, I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in my industry. I want to make a difference in my people's lives that call me boss. I want to make a difference. Number two, doing something that makes a difference. Number three, with people that make a difference. Number four, at a time that makes a difference. Right. That's powerful. That I makes. want to make a difference. With people that make a difference. Doing something that makes a difference at a time that makes a difference. And the thing that changed my life and let me let all the stress go away. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you. I'm not preaching to you today, but I have to have a quiet time every morning. I have to. Sure. We're so busy in the still of the, the beauty of the chirp, the, the birds chirping in the background. I have my own quiet time and uh, uh, I reflect on yesterday. I know what I have to do today. But John Maxwell always said this. And listen, this changed my life. 
He said, I can't worry. Stresses and everything, they're always going to be around us every day. The news, I can't watch the stinking news. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. I can't do it. Right. But he said, listen, yesterday's gone. Nothing I can do. Wins, losses, gone. I'm not promised tomorrow. But just for today. And then you put whatever your just for today is. Just for today, I'm going to treat people as though they're more important than me. Just for today, I'm going to be uh, uh, kind to this person. Just for today, I might reach out to that. Whatever that just for today is, and if we're laser focused on today, that day turns into weeks, those weeks turn into months, they turn into years, and significance turns into success. Wow. That is that is a great way to wrap this all up because I just think that's so powerful for everyone listening. Just those little tools coming in. I love that concept of I have my direction, but I got to focus on today. What's in front of me today? What can I do? Because if I look too far down, I'm going to trip and I'm going to fall or take it for granted or I'm going to miss. And I like that. I like those. So that's a great final little tool in the toolbox, you know, just for today just for today. So that's a great reminder. So I have it, I have it. Uh, he keeps it in his pocket. I have it in my car and it's just on an, in, and it's an index card just like this that just says just for today. And I have them, I have them all over the place and it just, it re, it, you know, as we zone out, it refocuses sure. me every single time. Right. Well, well, Tim, I cannot tell you how much this is say this, you get fired up. Like this is what's great. Now why I knew this was going to be fun is because as I said, I, I think a lot of the business leaders, people running business, people we know, very rarely does somebody sit down with them and say, let's talk about your people and your business because we're always talking about our products. And the products are great, but I, I know how you lead and I wanted uh, people to meet you and listen to you and understand that. Uh, and so again, I appreciate you uh, coming on here. So uh just tell anybody, because again, this is a gentleman you should follow, you know, in social media and just stay in touch with and see what he does. How, how do people find you? Where can they find you? So go to, go to whether you're a partner with us or not, you know, we wanted to, uh, you know, about three months ago, we wanted to give back and we wanted to have talks like this and we wanted to talk about the industry. So we do a weekly podcast called Tim Talks every Tuesday at 2 Every Monday at five, we go live at five for about five or 10 minutes with whatever guest you'll come on with me in a few right. weeks. Uh, and then we talk about that. The, but the most encouraging thing, you know, we had some people tuning in from, from Europe last week. Yesterday, you know, I got a, encouraging emails from Las Vegas just telling, and, and the, the, you know, and, and some of these people, we, we average between 70 and 80 people from dealerships that aren't our dealerships, that use other products. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. So, so, so you p please feel free. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Never claim to be. Um, but I will tell you, I, I love helping people. I love looking at, we're going to do that today with the dealership at, at noon. We're going to pull up some other websites and, and things like that. I I'd love to pour into you. Uh, please, please contact me at Tim at carnow.com. Follow me on Facebook at Tim Cox, or please like our Facebook page at car. Now uh, is our Facebook. And through that, you can sign up for the weekly Tim talks Tuesday at two. They are they are worth it. So again, um, everyone, uh, I appreciate it. Again, this this was phenomenal, and we're going to be also taking the audio and putting it all into a podcast as well. So those who are you traveling, you don't have to watch Tim and I. But. Again, uh, again, this is so valuable. We're going to be doing this every single week. So Tuesday, I release videos of just me talking about a topic. Then Thursdays will be interviews. If you liked what you see, please click the subscribe button, hit the little bell. So that way you can uh, be updated as things come out, new videos come out. And as always, please share because as Tim had said, there are so many people out there who could use this type of training this type of help it would be really really valuable to them as well so as always as i end every single segment what i say is you're in charge but now you have a few more tools from tim and myself that are going to help you be a little more successful so thank you so much tim thanks so much i'll see you soon God bless. thank you so much take care yeah